channel. So today I am doing a video to kind of help people who are new to fragrance world, perfumes, and sort of go through my 25 perfumes that kind of sum up uh, today's fragrance industry in 2021 and I think if you've tried all these you understand all these then you probably have a reasonable like foundation to understand perfumes at the moment these kind of cover off all the popular ones the big ones and all the different types of fragrances that are sold if you're new here then welcome we're all about perfumes so check out my hundreds and hundreds of other videos and if you're a regular but you haven't subscribed yet then do hit that subscribe button and show your support and join the conversation down below in the comments and as always I will leave links to where you can buy these in the US and the UK all the perfumes I talk about so this was actually kind of difficult but the way I sort of approached it is I thought about as I was learning about perfumes for the first time when I first started working in a perfume shop like the ones that stood out the ones that people were asking for the ones I would recommend the most I kind of took it from that point of view so I'm gonna start with perhaps the kind of most obvious most well-known ones which are Coco Mademoiselle from Chanel and Miss Dior from Dior so the two sort of most widely sold famous, highly advertised brands, Chanel and Dior that everyone kind of knows. These are like their flagship fragrances, their main fragrances. They have quite a lot in common with each other. Uh, they both have patchouli in, they both have rose in. They're both a sort of modern floral scent, I would say. Um, I personally love Miss Dior. I have the uh, a couple of flankers so flanker is when they do a slightly different version of it with a slightly different name so I have absolutely blooming I have blooming bouquet I have the eau de toilette version but the eau de parfum is their sort of main one their best seller and it's a very pretty warm comforting rose I think it smells really classy and sophisticated but quite expensive. And then um, Coco Mademoiselle from Chanel, again, it smells very classy. It's got a bit more of the patchouli and rose in, I'd say, and it's got an oranginess to it also. Um, but again, it smells very comforting, very homely. My mum wears it, I used to wear it. And those are sort of your main, big, most famous perfumes that even like men have heard of. <laughs> So another huge seller from Lancome is their La Vie Belle, where Julia Roberts is the face of the fragrance. This, it sometimes outsells Coco Mademoiselle and Miss Dior to take the number one spot. This is a vanilla praline perfume, so this is a sweet warm perfume. It's very universal, you could wear this at any age, um, but you have to like sweet, you have to like vanilla. It's just really quite sweet. I don't find it particularly sickly sweet, I do find it a warm sweet. I think they've done sweet very well and sweet perfumes are very popular. Most most like best-selling perfumes can be sweet now or and a lot of them also have patchouli and the, these are very common themes at the moment. So moving on to Armani, I think the most popular one is Armani C. Again, this is vanilla, but it's got patchouli in as well. So it's almost a bit like a mix between Coco Mademoiselle and La Vie Belle. It's not overly sweet, but it's not overly patchouli either. I really recommend this perfume because it's amazing for lasting. I'd say of all the ones we've talked about so far, it's the best for lasting. And when I wear this, I get compliments. People notice I'm wearing a fragrance even hours after I've sprayed it. So I do recommend this one. Um, I think in the past, Armani Code was kind of like the cool fragrance that Armani did. That isn't really that popular now. Um, that was a, a warm vanilla as well but this is like a more modern version of code it's their answer to, to code and i'm sure at some point code will get discontinued for women to understand some of the more traditional perfumes um of course chanel number no. five their classic fragrance it's not their best seller but what it is is a good idea of it's good for you to understand the how perfume is perhaps used to smell it has an aldehyde 
fragrance notes in it as its main note, which is kind of chemically, I find. Um, but a lot of perfumes from the past use this aldehyde note. It also used to have um, sort of musky, animalistic tones in it, which are no longer allowed to be sold if they come from like an animal. Um, but it's it's kind of, in, in my opinion, I find it a bit old fashioned scent um, and I really dislike aldehyde. Another like classic from Guerlain is Shalimar. Guerlain create beautiful perfumes, really good quality. Most of their perfumes are amazing for lasting. And Shalimar is like their signature traditional perfume. Again, it's probably an old fashioned smell now. It's an incensey smell, so vanilla and incense leather and some iris and these are all ingredients that again were very popular in the past now you tend to have some perfumes that are very incensey but not a lot and iris as well it tends to be used more in perfumes from the past than perfumes today another classic from dior is their dior poison now i don't think this is particularly old-fashioned smelling anymore compared to those it does have the incense in but I think this remains a bit more of a modern smell because it has a huge amount of plum in um, tuberose it's very heavy very intense very deep dark the bottle to me always looks like the Wicked Witch um, in Snow White like the apple or something you know it's that kind of vibe so it's dark and mysterious and sexy it's very good for lasting it's very strong but yeah it's got that incense vibe to it and I do recommend checking out the whole poison range the other sort of really good ones from them hypnotic poison is a really intense vanilla and then pure poison the white one is a really strong jasmine perfume so each one is kind of a really good example, those three, of a particular type of perfume. They're not similar at all. Jean-Paul Gaultier's Classique is a bottle that a lot of people are probably familiar with. They will have seen this advertised at Christmas, the male and the female version. Again, this is vanilla, but it's more sort of everyday sweet vanilla. It's amazing for lasting. It has a lot of orange blossom in as well. It's quite floral. I find it quite cozy and sort of mumsy smell. And they have loads of other ones now that come in very similar bottoms, but bottles. But this one, the classic, the, the pink one is the original. And then check out the men's as well, the blue stripy one. They, Jean Paul Gaultier, also have a range called Scandal. I really like Scandal by Night. There are a couple of versions. Scandal by Night, I think, is quite sexy and it's a really good example of a tonka bean perfume. Tonka bean, an important ingredient to know about, very warm and cozy. It's literally a type of bean but it creates a really nice slightly sexy warmth which I prefer to a vanilla warmth because it's not as sweet and then this also has a fair bit of cherry in as well which um, I really like. I really like cherry perfumes. So from celebrity point of view, celebrity perfumes do sell really well and sometimes it is because they are actually really good. Uh, Ariana Grande's Cloud is probably the most popular one at the moment. Oh, this comes in a really gimmicky but very cool bottle and it smells like coconut. So this is a great example of a coconut perfume and there's the bottle you can see very cool i love it it's actually really strong and good for lasting as well so considering it's way cheaper than a lot of designer ones it can be quite good britney spears fantasy is probably like the ultimate perfume um from celebrity it's been out like 20 years it's super sweet it's like a sweet cupcake um, but very popular and definitely one to just be aware of and try from givenchy they have a classic called Angie Demon, which is a deep, sexy vanilla, it comes in a really cool, sort of pointy bottle. Uh, but their new one, Irresistible Givenchy, in the square bottle, is a really nice, fresh, sparkling peony. They also have a sort of very irresistible, like live irresistible range that come in tall bottles, which again are very flesh, fresh, sparkling florals. They're very good at doing that. Um, maybe at a sort of younger audience or a sort of daytime audience, people that just want something fresh and light and not too intense but still smells classy. I think the Givenchy ones are always really good for that. 
Bulgari is a really good fragrance house. Their Splendida range is really good. Their Jasmine Noir is a great example of a strong, heavy jasmine. They have a tuberose one as well. And then their Omnia range, which come in these cool little sort of shell shapes, are really fresh and light. I think you, from Hugo Boss, you should try Deep Red. This is a classic. It's been around for ages, but it's just a good example of fruity perfume done well with black currant and blood orange clementine it's just really nice fruity one that really lasts very affordable um i think the bottle is probably a bit dated now but this has been popular for like 20 years and also from gucci their gucci rush that comes in that red sort of lego brick square is another classic one that's been around and still sells been around for ages this is really peachy, but it has patchouli in as well, so it's like a floral peach. Very warm, very cosy, and sticks around for ages. From Yves Saint Laurent, their Black Opium is their best seller. This has coffee in. Um, it's kind of like a party, night out type fragrance, aimed at sort of millennials, I think, um, but definitely a good example of a nice coffee, modern coffee. And then I'd also say Tom Ford, their sort of hero fragrance is Black Orchid, which is a spicy, earthy perfume with truffles in and chocolate, very warm, very intense, very deep and sexy. It can be worn by men or women. Um, this is was a huge hit when it came out and still sells really well. So that's my sort of whistle stop tour of, I think the sort of main perfumes to try to get your head around the perfume world and the different types of perfumes out there. Of course, there's way up many others as well. Um, but let me know what your questions are about perfumes and if you're someone who is really into perfumes, like what would be on your list? I'm sure I've missed ones out that people are like screaming at the screen saying I should have said. So let me know down below in the comments. But that's it guys, so thanks so much for watching as always, and I will see you in the next video. Bye!